Hello everybody, this video is on particle and antiparticle annihilation. By way of review, Einstein's mass energy equivalence principle is governed by the equation E equals mc squared. In this principle, Einstein proposed that the quantities of energy and mass are in fact interchangeable. There are numerous processes where energy can be converted into mass and whereby mass can be then converted into energy. The mass energy equivalence principle obeys the laws of conservation of energy as well as mass. When using this equation, mass can be available in kilograms or atomic mass units. If mass is in kilograms, then the energy we calculate will be in joules, and if the mass is in atomic mass units, the energy can be found in mega electron volts. Particle antiparticle annihilation refers to the collision process between a particle and its antiparticle. An antiparticle is essentially a type of particle with the same mass but the opposite electric charge as the particle. I go through the concepts of particle versus antiparticle in the standard model of matter in a separate video. Low energy annihilation, that is, collisions involving low energy particles and antiparticles will produce photons only. In these collisions, the mass of the particle and its antiparticle are completely converted or transformed into energy in the form of photons. In these scenarios, it is valid to assume that the kinetic energy is relatively negligible compared to the energy that can be derived from the mass of the particle and its antiparticle. In high energy annihilation settings, the kinetic energy of the particle and antiparticle cannot be disregarded. Under this condition, the annihilation will produce additional subatomic particles on top of energy in the form of photons. The collision between low energy proton and a antiproton, which is its antiparticle, will produce two identical photons. The energy of the photons can be calculated using the equation E equals mc squared. The mass of a proton is 1.673 times 10 to the power of minus 27 kilograms. This is also the mass of the antiproton. Remember that the antiparticle has the same mass but the opposite charge as its particle. When the mass of the proton and antiproton are transformed into energy, we need to include the mass of both particle and the antiparticle, which is why we multiply this by 2. Since the mass is in kilograms, we can multiply this by c squared in minutes per second, and this gives us 3.01 times 10 to minus 10 joules of energy altogether. We can convert this into mega electron volts by dividing by 1.602 times 10 to minus 19 and then further dividing it by a million to commit to mega. This amount of energy, whether it's in joules or mega electron volts, are shared evenly between two photons that are produced from this annihilation process. So the energy of a single gamma photon can be calculated by simply dividing the total energy, which is 1880 by 2, and that is 940 mega electron volts. The annihilation between low energy electron and positron behaves in a very similar manner. The energy of the photons that are produced can be calculated by considering the combined mass of the electron and the positron, which is a common name given to the anti-electron, the antiparticle of an electron. When we multiply the mass of the electron by 2 and times by the speed of light squared, we'll get the energy that's produced, which is 1.64 times 10 to the power of minus 13 joules. Again, we can convert this into mega electron volts. Whether it's in joules or mega electron volts, this energy is again shared between the two identical photons. So the energy of one single gamma photon can be calculated by dividing the total energy by two, which yields a value of 0.511 mega electron volts. In both examples of low energy annihilation, the particle and its antiparticle are completely transformed into energy in the form of two photons. The kinetic energy of these particle and antiparticles prior to the collision are not included in the calculation as they are relatively negligible compared to the energy derived from the mass. It is also important to note that the starting mass of the particle and antiparticle will determine the amount of energy of the photons produced. Since the electron and positron have relatively smaller masses compared to the proton and the antiproton, the energy of the gamma photon produced from this annihilation is much smaller compared to the energy of the photon produced from the proton and antiproton annihilation. This concludes the video on particle and antiparticle annihilation.